Patients frequently wonder, how do we get the knee straight or how do we actually align the knee during surgery? And that's the topic of today's video. Welcome back once again. And if you could take a moment right now and click the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this content and subscribe. Today's video is gonna be a little technical. And for some of you, it might be over your head, but for some of you that are really curious and want to learn a little bit more about the technical aspects of how we actually do a knee replacement, this video is for you. So I'm gonna to try to not go off on a tangent because this is something that I'm passionate about, but I have to kind of cover some basics. So when we talk about the limb alignment, we can talk about different varying limb alignments. And this is sometimes in a normal knee, but more commonly we see this in an arthritic knee. So you can be bow-legged, we call that varus. You can be neutrally aligned, pretty straight, which is actually about a five to seven degree knock knee bend or significantly knock kneed, which we call valgus. And we measure this frequently on x-rays. So when we look at the x-rays, if we get long length films, we can draw a line between the femoral head, the center of it, and the center of the ankle. And this line should bisect the center of the knee in a fairly straight knee or straight leg. This is called the mechanical axis. Now there's also the anatomic axis, and this is more of a straight line between the bones, both the thigh bone and the shin bone. And the angle that, that they bisect in the knee is another measurement. And this is where it gets really complicated. So if you look at this slide here, I mean, there's lots of measurements. So we could spend all day just talking about the different measurements around knee. But when we do a knee replacement, the goal is to improve your pain, improve your quality of life, improve your function by restoring the alignment of the knee. Now, there's three main philosophies when we talk about knee alignment. So John Insull, who's basically like the, the king when it comes to knee replacements, initially talked about an alignment philosophy called mechanical alignment. And this basically took a five to seven degree cut off the end of the thigh bone um, and a, a perpendicular cut off the top of the shin bone. Now the joint line, however, is not straight. It's not parallel to the floor. It's actually tilted a little bit. We call varus um, by about two or three degrees. So in doing this, you have to release ligaments to balance the knee. And also we're talking about two dimensional. So we also have to look at the knee as a three dimensional object and to make up for the cuts that he made that kind of distorted the joint line by a few degrees, you also have to rotate the femoral component or the thigh bone part externally three degrees. And this has sort of been the mantra for the majority of knee replacements done since its infancy um, up until now. Now there's another type of alignment philosophy called anatomic alignment. And this is um, pioneered by Dr. Hungerford and Dr. Krakow. And this was more in line with trying to keep that oblique joint line. And they made some different cuts at a couple different angles to try to restore. But this was a, again, a two dimensional look at the knee. Now, more frequently, and what has become extremely popular, and which is why a lot of patients start to ask about it, is this idea or philosophy called kinematic alignment. Now, kin kinematic alignment has been very popularized by Steve Hall up in Northern California. Um, and he even wrote a book trying to detail to other surgeons the technical aspects of how he does and performs this calipered um, kinematic alignment technique. And this is a three-dimensional look. So this is really trying to not only retain the obliquity of the joint line, but to make cuts that are measured with calipers to restore whatever the thickness of the actual total knee replacement component is. It's trying to really kind of put the knee replacement parts exactly where your bones are. And the hopes there is that three-dimensionally, your knee works better. It's more now, the hard part is people are different. So again, once again, there are people that are bow-legged or varus, there's people that are knock kneed or valgus, and there's people that are neutral. And the hard part is that if you're really varus or really valgus, we don't exactly know where you were before you developed arthritis. And also if you're really varus and really valgus, your ligaments may be stretched or tight. And the question is, what should we do to restore that? And this is where we really don't know exactly where to put 
your total knee. You know, people think robotics are the thing that is going to guarantee a perfect outcome. And the problem is that we have to look at what's called accuracy and precision. And we really want to be both accurate and precise. In this slide, you can see that the red arrows, if we're aiming for the bullseye, are both accurate and precise, where the blue arrows, arrows are still precise, but they were not accurate. And the idea of robotics or any technology, be it augmented reality or handheld devices, is we can reduce outliers. We can become more precise. But again, the problem is nobody's exactly sure where accurate is. You know, should we make you mechanical? Should we treat you anatomic? Should we treat you kinematic? Should we leave your very varus bow-legged leg a little bow-legged? Or should we make it straight? What if we push it all the way over into a valgus or knock knee knee? The idea is that person probably wouldn't like it because we made such a huge difference, but nobody is really sure exactly where we're supposed to put your knee, although each surgeon has a different philosophy and a different feel that they're looking for to try to get the outcome that they're aiming for at the time of surgery. Now, just to make things more complicated, if we talk about kinematic, there's really three different kinds of kinematic. You can do what's called restricted kinematic, where they try to keep the cuts within three degrees of the margin of error of what you're kind of trying to create. So if you're really, really oblique, they're not going to cut you super, super obliquely. They're going to kind of go about three degrees and stop there. Some surgeons do what we call unrestricted kinematic. And this is where if your joint line is really oblique, they're going to make a really oblique cut, again, trying to match the thickness of the bone and cartilage they remove to what they're implanting in your knee. Now, some people, instead of doing the femur or your thigh bone first, that's typically the first step in a kinematic knee is cutting the end of your thigh bone, what we call the distal femoral cut. Some surgeons try to do this, what we call an inverse kinematic. So they actually cut the tibia first, which is your shin bone, and then move on to the femur after that. Now, in this view here, you'll see these are basically the difference in a simplistic form of the bone cuts two-dimensionally in both mechanical alignment and kinematic alignment. Um, and this other slide, which is a little busy, kind of really describes some of the differences between anatomic and kinematic. Now, I'm sure that is a lot of information and you're probably actually more confused now than when I started this video, but I just wanted to kind of touch on the ideas of the different philosophies because patients are starting to ask because they've heard about this idea of kinematic alignment. Now, mechanical alignment has been good for a lot of years and I have a lot of surgeons and I myself have done kinematic and it's worked well. The problem is that it can come with problems. So in certain instances, if people have soft bone, someone's doing unrestricted kinematic and that cut is very oblique, it can actually lead to lucency or subsidence and failure of the implants because they're put in so obliquely. The other thing that we ran into is when knee replacements were really designed, one of the big things and still one of the big issues that arise is the alignment of the patellofemoral joint. That's the kneecap where it rides in a groove called the trochlea in the thigh bone. And the idea that John Insull had was because he took three degrees out of the joint line, he rotated that component three degrees and that restored some of that alignment of the kneecap joint. Some surgeons, when they do this kinematic alignment, are actually internally rotating. So they're actually turning the, the femoral component in the completely opposite direction. And some of the complications that we've seen are what's called patellar dislocations, where your kneecap actually dislocates after the knee replacement surgery. And that typically has to be fixed with additional surgeries or revision. So with any new thing put into a surgeon's hand, be it an implant or a computer or a robot or a philosophy, there's always a learning curve. So there is always a risk of problems developing until that surgeon becomes more comfortable with the new technique. So the gist of all of this is, is if you are curious about the different philosophies, this is what it is. If you're finding a surgeon who is maybe talking to you about some of the different philosophies that they're using, I always encourage patients, you know, ask somebody, how many of these have you done? Have you done five? Have you done 50? Have you done 200? Because you don't always want to be part of a surgeon's learning curve. That is when complications tend to be higher. 
But at this point, there are a lot of surgeons that are seeing excellent results with kinematic techniques. They are doing less soft tissue releases. The idea is that patients feel more normal in a three-dimensional way, but because there's lots of studies that are comparing these different philosophies, it's still gonna take quite some time before we truly come up with an answer as to what's the best philosophy. And really for each individual patient, where we're supposed to put your knee. Kinematic might be great in certain people and mechanical may be better in others. In some patients, depending on your anatomy, you might get away with either and do fine, but we wanna make sure that you're not a person that's having a certain implant put in in a certain way that just doesn't feel right and leads to pain and dysfunction and maybe even leads to a revision down the road. So once again, I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. Until next time, I'm Adam Rosen. Stay safe.